It is so good to see you this Sunday. Det er skønt at se jer den her søndag. And it's so good to see all the Americans. Velkommen til alle amerikanerne. You can see that you looked a bit disappointed when she said the word tea. <laughs> I så lidt skuffet ud, da der blev sagt, at der var te. But we have coffee and we have coke as well for you. Men vi har kaffe herude, I får en. So, my name is Eric and I'm a pastor in this church. Jeg hedder Erik og jeg er præst her i kirken. And uh, last Sunday we had a, such a great day in church. Og sidste søndag var en vidunderlig dag her. We had a lot of new faces. Vi havde nye ansigter. And then we had some familiar faces as well. Og nogle velkendte ansigter. And as you heard out in the foyer we had this mingle afterwards. Og som I kunne høre sidste gang så var der en kom sammen herude efterfølgende. And there were so many people who stayed to chat and to eat a cake and to drink coffee. Mange mennesker blev herude og hyggede og snakkede og drak kaffe og spiste kage. And it was such a success. Det var en stor succes. So we decided that we will serve coffee this day as well in the foyer. Så stor en succes at vi gør det igen den her søndag. So please stay a few minutes off the church. Så I velkommen til blive efter kirke herude. Say hi to an American. Hils på en amerikaner. Say hi to me. Hils på mig. I would love to see you afterwards. Jeg vil rigtig gerne møde jer bagefter. Now, have you ever tried to imagine what Jesus looks like? Har I nogensinde prøvet at forestille jer, hvordan Jesus ser ud? Imagine that you would go out of the church. Forestil jer, at I går ud her. And you would meet Jesus on Nørrebro Gade. At I og så møder Jesus på Nørrebro Gade. What would he look like? Hvordan ser han ud? Have you thought about that? Har I tænkt over det? You know, there is all different kind of images or pictures of Jesus. Der er en masse afbildninger af Jesus. Like this one. Det her for eksempel. Jesus as the shepherd. Jesus som hyrden. With a small lamb in his uh, in his arms. Med det lille lam i sin fang. And people who has actually seen Jesus in visions. Og folk som rent faktisk har set Jesus i et syn. They often describe that he is dressed in light clothes. Beskriver ham som have hvide hvidt tøj på. I remember my my grandfather. He told me when I was a kid. Da jeg var barn, så fortalte min morfar mig, that he had seen Jesus in a vision, at han havde set Jesus i et syn. And I was totally amazed about that story. Og jeg var virkelig begejstret for den historie. And I asked him, but grandfather, how did you know that it was Jesus? Men jeg spurgte ham, morfar, hvordan vidste du det var Jesus? And he said because Jesus was surrounded in a white light. Fordi Jesus var omringet af et hvidt lys, fortalte han. Now we are going to take a look. Nu skal vi kigge på at how the at how the Bible presents two quite different hvordan Bibelen præsenterer to ret forskellige and somehow contradicting og også på en måde modsigende images or symbols symboler eller afbildninger of Jesus af Jesus. We we find them in the book of Revelation. Vi møder dem i Johannes åbenbaring. And We read about when John the disciples to Jesus is an old man. Vi læser om at Johannes som gammel mand and he is in prison on an island called Patmos, fængslet på Patmos øen in the Mediterranean, i Middelhavsområdet. And when he is in prison, God gives him a vision. Her giver Gud ham et syn and he is allowed to see into heaven. Og han får lov til at se himlen. And in the book of Revelation chapter 5 uh, John describes what he sees in heaven. Og her der beskriver Johannes så hvad, der, hvad han ser i himlen. And he described that he see God on his throne. Han ser Gud på tronen. And then he see 24 other thrones with the 24 elders sitting in white clothes. Og så ser han så også 24 andre troner, hvor der sidder 24 ældre eller ældste på de troner. And around the throne of God there is four creatures or beings. Omkring den her trone, der er der så også fire væsener. And John described that they have eyes in the front and eyes in the neck. Så Johannes beskriver faktisk, at de har øjne både foran på ansigtet og i nakken. And these four beings, og de her fire væsener, they worship God without rest night and day. Utrætteligt lovsynger de Gud nat og dag. Singing, holy, holy, holy is God Lord Almighty, who was, who is, and who is coming. Og der synger de hellig, hellig, hellig er Herren Gud almægtig, ham som er som var 
og som kommer. And then it's John describes us that he sees a scroll that no one is worthy to open. Så so ser Johannes en skriftrulle som ingen er værdig til at åbne. And because of this there's some weeping going on by the throne. Og fordi der ikke er nogen der er værdig, så er der også gråd omkring tronen. But then then John describes in verse 5 what happens next. Så so fortæller Johannes i vers 5 hvad der sker. Then one of the elders said to me, "Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals." Men en af de ældste sagde til mig, "Græd ikke, for løven af Judas stamme, Davids rådskud, har sejret, så han kan åbne bogen og dens syv sejler." And in the verse after we read, "Then I saw a lamb." looking as if it had been slain standing at the center of the throne encircled by the four living creatures and the elders og i verset lige efter så står der og jeg så et lam stå mellem tronen og de fire levende væsener og de ældste det så ud som slagtet og det havde syv horn og syv øjne det er guds syv ånder der er sendt ud over hele jorden. These two verses they describe the exact same scene. De her to vers, de beskriver præcis det samme scenarie. It's heaven, himlen, God on his throne, Gud på tronen, 24 elders sitting on their thrones, 24 ældste siddende på deres troner, four beings worshiping God, fire væsener der lovpriser Gud. And what's remarkable is og det der så er bemærkelsesværdigt. That both verses describes Jesus. Er at begge vers beskriver Jesus. But in two totally different ways. Men på to vidt forskellige måder. First it describes Jesus as the lion of Judah. Først beskriver det Jesus som løven af Juda. Strong, stærk, powerful, mægtig, respectful. Respectful, something that is worth our uh, respect and our admiration, something you can even fear. Noget beundringsværdigt og frygtindgydende. Grr, power, Rar. magt. <laughs> That's a better one. <laughs> But at the same time, in the next verse. Men på samme tid lige efter. Jesus is described as a lamb. Så han portrætteret som et lam. Something small. Noget smart. Something tender, noget mildt, harmless, harmløst. But according to the book of Revelation, men i følge Johannes åbenbaring, both of them are Jesus. Så so begge Jesus in the same person, i samme person. And you know, the lion and the lamb, it's the most common animals in the Bible. Løven og lammet er de mest almindelige dyr i Bibelen. If I have made my accounting uh, correct, hvis jeg har talt rigtigt, You, the lion is mentioned 86 times in the Bible. Så so, løven nævnt 86 gange. And the Bible. lamb is mentioned 111 times in Og the Bible. Og lammet 111 gange. And this is not a coincidence. Og det er ikke et tilfælde. You know the lamb it's a symbol of uh, innocent and something pure. Lammet er et symbol på noget uskyldigt eller rent. In Jewish tradition a lamb was slaughtered. I jødisk tradition der slagtede man lam at Easter as an offering to God in remembrance til påske som et offer til Gud in remembrance that he had led his people out of slavery in Egypt into freedom for men så selv om at Gud han havde friet israelitterne i slaveri ud af Egypten and this this slaughter it took place on the ninth hour man slagtede det her påskelam i den 9. time on what was called the preparation day på f- det der var kaldt forberedelsesdagen and it was the day before sabbath it means on a friday så det var dagen før sabbaten altså om fredagen and when we read about jesus og når vi læser om jesus it was on the ninth hour så var det ved den 9. time on a friday på en fredag that jesus died on a cross at han døde på et kors at the exact same time på præcis samme tid as the first passover lamb was slaughtered in the temple som det allerførste påskelam var blevet ofret i templet and you know in our christian faith i vores kristne tro the slaughtered lamb 
så er det slagtet lam. It's the symbol of the ultimate act of love. Et symbol på den ultimative kærlighedshandling. Jesus dying on a cross. Jesus der dør på et kors. As a sacrifice for our sins. Som et offer for vores synder. He who had all the power. Ham som havde al magt. But resigned from it. Men afstod den. Jesus is the lamb of God. Jesus er Guds lam who was led to slaughter som blev ført til slagtning. The lion on the other hand. Løven derimod. You know that's that's a symbol of power. Det er et symbol på magt. Of strength, styrke. And all of us who have seen a lion in action og alle os som har stået ansigt til ansigt med en løve. <laughs> Or maybe at least seen a lion. Eller i hvert fald set en løve. We understand this this picture, this symbol. Vi forstår det her billede. It's nothing you want to stand face to face with. Jo, det har man ikke lyst til at stå ansigt til ansigt med. Many years ago, my wife Erika and I. For mange år siden, da Erika og jeg. We were in uh, Nairobi. Var vi i Nairobi? And then we took a. We have someone from Kenya here. Ah. Er der nogen fra Kenya? Yes. And when we were in Nairobi, we took a taxi to Nairobi National Park. Så so tog vi en taxa til Nairobi National Park. It's a safari park quite close to the city. En safari park ret tæt på byen. And don't ask me why we took a cab. Jeg ved ikke hvorfor vi tog en taxa. But I think it was cheaper than this regular safari jeeps that you were supposed to go in. Men som jeg husker det så var det billigere end de der jeeps som var ligesom det rigtige safari park tur. And I don't think it was my wife's idea. Jeg tror ikke det var min kones idé. But so we went out with this taxi driver into the park. Så vi tog med ham her taxichaufføren ind i parken. And uh, uh, suddenly he stopped the car and he said, "Let's get out." So plötsligt så siger han, stopper han bilen og så siger han, "Lad os gå ud." And we, I will show you something spectacular. Og så so vil jeg vise jer noget helt formidabelt. So we went out of the car. Så so vi gik ud af bilen. And we started to walk. Go, begyndte at gå. And then he stopped. Så so stoppede han. And then he pointed to some bushes that was like 30 meters away. Og så pegede han på nogle buske cirka 30 meter væk. And there was some movement in the bush. Der var noget bevægelse i busken. And then he looked at us and asked, "Do you see the lion?" Og så spørger han på til os, "Kan I se løven?" And I could see that there was something. Jeg kunne se der var noget. And then he said, "Og så siger han, if that's a male, hvis det er en hanløve, then it means that there is several, probably several female. Så betyder det sandsynligvis at der er en del løvinder close by, her rundt omkring, staring at us right now, som kigger på os lige nu with their hungry eyes, med deres sultne øjne. And when he said hungry eyes, og da han sagde sultne øjne, I looked at my wife, så kiggede jeg på Erika, that had turned totally pale blev helt bleg and she started to run og hun begyndte at løbe and i have never seen her run this fast jeg har aldrig set hende løbe så hurtigt you could hear run forest run du kunne bare høre løb forest løb i baggrunden and she, she off she went er sted med hende but the taxi driver men taxichaufføren he was totally cool han var helt rolig he lighted a cigarette han tændte en cigaret. Started to smoke. Begyndte at ryge. You know, it was like business as usual. Som om det var endnu en dag på kontoret. Until suddenly. Lige indtil. We hear like a crash. Var der et eller andet der knækkede? A bit further away. Lidt længere væk. And out come three female lions. Så kommer der tre løvinder. At our direction. Lige imod os. And when I turn around. Og da jeg vender mig om. He is always half away to the car. Så er han, han er allerede halvvejs hen mod taxaen. <laughs> so I have to run. Så er sted med mig. But then you cannot believe what happened next. Men det der så sker efterfølgende tror Because when I we come to the car. Da, da, da vi kommer til bilen. You don't know what Erica has done. Så ved I ikke hvad Erika hun har gjort. She has locked the car hun from the inside. Hun har låst døren indfra. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Bare for sjov. <laughs> Bare for sjov. <laughs> it was open. Den var åben. And we got into the car. Og vi kom i sikkerhed. Safe and sound in one piece. Vi kom i et stykke. But my pulse, it was like you know, 200 beats at a second. Men min puls var 200 slag i sekundet. And we did not turn up as a lion lunch that day. Heldigvis endte vi ikke som løve frokost den dag. But something tells me that this is not how you normally do on safaris. Men mit indtryk er, at sådan er normale safarier ikke. <laughs> But I learned two important things about lions this day. Men to fundamentale ting lærte jeg den her dag om løver. First, they are so much bigger than you think. For det første, de er meget større end man tror. And the tror. second. 
Og for det andet. Do not ever. Lad være med I mean, nogensinde. Ever, nogensinde. Take a taxi to see the lion. Og bare tage en taxi no for at se det løbende. No matter how cheap it is. Uanset hvor billigt det er. It's not worth it. Promise me. Det er ikke det værd. Lov mig det. So, the first time we find the 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 word or description of the lion, the tribe of Judah. Første gang vi møder ju begrebet Judas stamme i Bibelen. It is in the book of Genesis. A første Mosebog, where we read about a man called Jacob, hvor vi møder en mand der hedder Jakob. And he has 12 sons. Han har 12 sønner. Imagine that. Folly forestille dem. And these are the 12 sons who later will become the 12 tribes of Israel. De 12 sønner bliver så senere Israels 12 stammer. And one of the sons is called Judah. En af de her sønner hedder Juda. And he is described in the Genesis as a lion cub. Og han er i øh, første Mosebog beskrevet som en løveunge. Listen to what it says in Genesis 49 and verse 9. Hør hvad der står her i jo, øh, hvad hedder det første Mosebog. You are a lion's cub, Judah. You return from the prey, my son. Like a lion, he crouches la- and lies down. Like a lioness, who dares to rouse him? Judah er en løveunge. Fra rov er du vendt hjem, min søn. Som en løve har han lagt sig til hvile. Som en hundløve, hvem tør væk ham? Jesus, he was a descendant of Judah tribe. Jesus, han var efterkommer af Judas stamme. Just like uh, King David and Solomon. Ligesom kong David og Salomon. So the reference to the lion of the tribe of Judah så den her reference til Judas stammen løven af Judas stammen it points to the conquering så det peger på den erobrende the victorious den sejrende the king that would descend from Judah's heritage konge som skulle nedstamme fra Juda and when you look back at our history in, in even in Europe og når vi så ser tilbage på vores uh, europæiske there historie there are many kings and rulers så er der mange konger og regenter who want to identify themselves with a lion som gerne vil identificere sig med en løve like Richard the Lionheart of England Kong Richard Løvehjerte af England in Sweden where I come from we have a we had a queen called Christina Ja, fra Sverige, der havde vi en dronning der hed Kristina. And she called herself the true Nordic lion. Hun kaldte sig selv for den sande nordiske løve. There's no king who want to be associated with a lamb. Der er ikke nogen konge der vil associeres med et lam. No, they all want to be associated with a lion. De vil gerne alle sammen være en løve. A strong, stærk, roaring lion. En brølende løve. <laughs> Not lamby. Ikke et ikke lamby. And you know, I've done a lot of thinking lately. Jeg har tænkt over på det sidste. Of the way that we look at Jesus. På den måde vi ser Jesus. I think that many of us we, when we visualize Jesus. Jeg tror når mange af os forestiller os Jesus. It's mainly as a lamb. Så er det hovedsageligt som et lam. Which means that we often also treat him like a like a teddy bear. Så betyder det så også at vi også behandler ham som en bamse. We we use him for our comfort. Vi bruger ham til omsorg. But we do not fully understand the power of the lion. Men vi begriber ikke fuldt ud løvens kraft. And I know to fully understand who Jesus is and get to know him. Men for at begribe det her fuldt ud og lære ham at kende. I think we need to embrace the the contradictions of God. Så tror jeg det er vigtigt at vi lærer at omfavne modsætningerne i Gud. You know he is full of righteousness and grace. Han er fuld af retfærdighed og nåde. But he is also the judge. Men han er også den dommer who comes to term with sin and evil in the world. Der kommer og gør op med synd og ondskab i verden. You know if we only think of Jesus as a lamb, hvis vi kun ser ham som et lam, then I think we will expect him to also have the impact as a lamb. Så forventer vi også kun han har en indvirkning som et lam. Something harmless, noget harmløst. Something small, smart. Something saying bad, noget der bare siger bad. But when we read about Jesus in the gospels, men når vi læser om Jesus i evangelierne, he's so often he's acting powerfully. 
så ser vi ham handle kraftfuldt. He is casting out demons. Han uddriver dæmoner. He is making miracles. Han udretter mirakler. There is one moment when he goes to the temple. Der er et øjeblik hvor han tager til templet. And there is some businessmen who have turned the temple into a marketplace. Hvor forretningsmænd har omdannet templet til en handelsplads. And Jesus becomes full of anger. Og han Jesus bliver fyldt med vrede. And he overthrows the temple the, the tables and the chairs. Han vælter bord og stole. And so often we read Jesus acting as a roaring lion. Og tit læser vi om at Jesus han også agerer som en brølende løve. There is this story in the Gospel of Mark. I Markus evangeliet støder vi på en historie. Where there is a, a leader of the synagogue. Hvor der er en synagogeforstander. And he comes to Jesus and he's desperate. Kommer til Jesus desperat. Because his, his little girl is sick and now she has already died. Hans datter har været syg og er faktisk allerede død. So he throws himself at Jesus' feet. Så han kaster sig ned for Jesus' fødder. And then you read about Jesus' response. Og så læser vi om Jesus' respons. And it's like for Jesus, he has this is similar with the taxi driver in Africa. It's like death is not a big deal. Og for Jesus, det har han faktisk til fælles med ham taxichaufføren, jeg fortalte om tidligere. Døden, det er ikke noget stort problem. Listen to what it says in Mark 5. Prøv se, hvad han siger her. He went in and said to them, Jesus. Jesus gik ind til dem og sagde, Why all this commotion and wailing? Hvorfor larmer og græder I? The child is not dead. Barnet er ikke død. But asleep. Hun sover. And then Jesus takes her hand. Så tager han hendes hånd. And wakes her up. Og vækker hende op. And death was over. Og døden var over. Just like that. Sådan der. Because Jesus is the lion who rules over death Fordi and life. Jesus er den løve der regerer over liv og død. And reading the gospel, og når vi læser evangelierne, it is clear to me. Så er det tydeligt for mig. That Jesus is both at Jesus er både the lion, løven and the lamb. Og lammet. You know he is tender to tax collectors and sinners. Han har omsorg for tollere og syndere. But he is fearless when he faces corrupt leaders. Men frygtløs over for korrupte ledere. You know, he takes small children in his arms. Han har børn i sin favn. And then he roars to storms on the sea. Og så brøler han samtidig til storme på søen. And you know, right now we live in a time of extreme tension in the world. Lige nu der lever vi i en tid med ekstrem spænding. And I think so many people in our part of the world, og jeg kan forestille mig at rigtig mange mennesker i vores del af verden, is uncertain what or who, er usikker på hvad eller hvem, holds the brush that will paint the future of Europe, som holder den øh, pensel i hånden, som skal male Europas fremtid. But one thing we know, men en ting er sikkert, and that is that God has given us promises, at Gud har givet os løfter. Promises that we can hold on to. Løfter som vi kan holde fast i. Listen to what it says in uh, Revelation chapter 7. Hør hvad der står i Johannes åbenbaring kapitel 7. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of living water and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes for lammet midt for tronen skal vogte dem og lede dem til livets kildevæld og gud vil tørre hver tår af deres øjne we know that there are so many people that are suffering and crying right now lige nu er der rigtig mange mennesker der både græder og lider as a consequence of the war in ukraine som en konsekvens af krigen i ukraine And our hearts it breaks with them. Og vores hjerter brister sammen med dem. And we pray for them. Vi beder for dem. But when we hear their cry, men når vi hører deres gråd, we also act. Så handler vi også. Because that's what Jesus did. Fordi det er det Jesus gør. He didn't only listen to the stories. Han lyttede ikke bare til historierne. He also acted out of love. Han handlede også ud af kærlighed. And that's why we also act. Og det er også derfor vi handler. That's why we went to Ukraine and po- uh, the po- border to Ukraine. Og det er derfor vi tog til den ukrainske grænse. That's why we send so much money we can. <laughs> derfor vi sender så mange penge That's vi kan. That's why we prepare our church to welcome people from Ukraine here. Det er derfor vi forbereder vores kirke på at byde folk fra Ukraine velkommen her. You know in Sweden there is a saying. På svensk der er der et udtryk der hedder 
It is the thought that counts. Det er tanken der tæller. I don't know if you have it here as well. Det har vi. It's nice. Det er skønt, fint udtryk. But is it really true? Men er det sandt? Because there is moments in your life in the in the history of man. Fordi der er øjeblikke i dit liv og i hele menneskehedens historie. Where the only thing that matters. Hvor det eneste der gælder. Is what you actually do. Er hvad du rent faktisk gør. And not what you are thinking. Ikke hvad du tænker. Every, all of you who are parents know that. Alle jer der er forældre ved det. If you have your small baby crying in the room next to yours. Forestil dig du har et lille barn inde ved siden af der græder. And you are thinking to yourself. Og du tænker i love my child. Jeg elsker mit barn. But I am too tired to get up and pick her up. Men jeg er for træt til at rejse mig og gå ud og løfte hende op. That thought of love, den tanke kærlighed, doesn't make any good for your baby. Hjælper ikke dit barn. The only thing she need or he needs, det eneste det barn har brug for, is your hand to pick him up. Er din favn. And it's the same when we see the crisis around the world right now. Og det er det samme når vi ser de her kriser rundt omkring i verden. We know that Jesus want to comfort. Vi ved at Jesus han er comfort. Because he is the slaughtered lamb. Fordi han er det slagtede lam. But we also know that he is the roaring lion. Men vi ved også at han er den brølende løve. And he's calling you and me and us as a church. Og han kalder dig og mig og os som kirke. To step out in the storm. Til at træde ud i stormen. And do acts of love og udføre kærlighedshandlinger because he's do calling us to do what he did fordi han kalder os til at gøre det han selv gjorde represent the slaughter lamb til at repræsentere det slagtede lam and the lion of judah og judas stammens løve amen amen i don't know what your image of jesus is jeg ved ikke hvad dit billede af jesus er maybe it's the comforting lamb måske er det det bløde lam But when you hear about Jesus as the lion of Judah tribe, men når vi hører om Jesus som Judas stammens løve, to the storm, som brøler af stormen, who casts out demons, som uddriver dæmoner, who raises a little girl from the death into life, som opvækker en død pige til liv, hearing this this Sunday morning, once again, hearing this this Sunday når, morning, når vi hører det her den her søndag morgen, you realize that you need Jesus as a lion in your life right now. Så opdager vi at du har brug for Jesus som den brølende løve lige nu. You need Jesus to fight your battles. Du har brug for at Jesus han bekæmper dine kampe. You need Jesus to roar at the storms that you are in the midst of right now. Du har brug for at Jesus han brøler at de storme du står midt i. You need Jesus to turn whatever death you are facing into life right now. Du har brug for at Jesus han vender hvilken død du end står over for lige nu til liv. And if that is you, hvis det er dig, Jesus, the Lion of Judah, så er Jesus Judas løven. He wants to step in, step into your circumstances right now and right here. Så står han til rådighed for at træde ind i dine omstændigheder lige nu. Could I just ask all of us to close our eyes and bow our heads? Vær sød alle lige nu og luk vores øjne og bøje vores hoveder. And if you are here this morning, og hvis du er her til morgen. And you need Jesus. Og du har brug for Jesus. Not only as the comforting lamb. Ikke bare det beskyttende lam. But you need the power from the lion of Judah. Men at du har brug for kraften fra løven fra Judas stam. Into your life. I dit liv. Your family. Din familie. Your circumstances. Din omstændigheder. Then I want to pray for you this morning. Så vil jeg gerne bede for dig. And if that is you, you could just lift up your hand right now. Hvis det er dig, så løft hånden lige nu. As a cry for help. Som et råb om hjælp. That Jesus will come with all his power. At Jesus vil komme med al sin kraft. With all his strength. Al sin styrke. And help you and save you. Og hjælp dig og frelse dig. Jesus sees all of your hands. Jesus han ser alle hænderne. Jesus, you see everyone who is reaching out to you this morning. Jesus, du ser alle der rækker ud til dig den her morgen. Nothing is impossible to you. Intet er umuligt for dig. And the same power that raised the dead. Og den død som oprejste fra de døde. And healed the sick. Og helbredte de syge. I thank you that that is still at work today. Jeg takker dig for at den stadig arbejder i den dag i dag. You are the Lamb of God. Du er Guds lam. And the Lion of Judah. Og løven af Judah. So I pray. Så jeg beder. Holy Spirit. Helligånd. 
Come with your power. Kom med din kraft. To everyone. Til alle. Who need it right now. Som har brug for det lige nu. And I pray this in Jesus name. Og det beder jeg om i Jesu navn. Amen. 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 And then, then I just want to reach out to you. Så vil jeg også gerne række ud til dig. Whom you maybe not call yourself a Christian. Der er som måske ikke kalder dig selv kristen. Maybe you call yourself a spiritual seeker. Det kan være du kalder dig en spirituel søger. Agnostic or atheist. Agnostic or atheist. And maybe you have had some kind of image of who Jesus can be. Og det kan være du har haft en forestilling om hvem Jesus er. But listening to this sermon today. Men når du lytter til den her prædiken. You realize that Jesus is so much more than you have thought before. Så går det op for dig at Jesus er langt mere end du havde forestillet dig. He's a powerful reality. Han er en kraftfuld realitet. And he is the lamb that has taken away your sin. Og han er det lam der har fjernet din synd. And he's given you forgiveness for everything you've done. Og givet dig tilgivelse for alt hvad du har gjort. And for everything you ever will done. Og alt det du kommer til at gøre. And today you can say yes to him. Og i dag kan du sige ja til ham. And say that you want to live in friendship with Jesus. Og at du har lyst til at leve i et venskab med ham. So can we please close our eyes one more time? Så lad os lige bøje hovederne og lukke øjnene igen. And if you are here, og hvis du er her, and maybe you think right now, og måske tænker du lige nu, ah, I should give give it a go. Skulle jeg give det et forsøg? I should get to know Jesus. Burde jeg lære ham at kende? Please just lift up your hand right now. Så vær sød og ræk hånden op lige nu. And your hand is a symbol to Jesus that you want to give your life to him this morning. Som et symbol til Jesus om at du gerne vil give dit liv til ham den her morgen. Jesus sees your hand. Jesus ser din hånd. Jesus sees your hand. Og din hånd. And your hand. Og din hånd. And your hand. Og din. And your hand. Og din. And if you're watching Online from home, Jesus sees your hand as well. Hvis du følger med online derhjemmefra, så ser Jesus også din hånd. And now you can pray after me, all of us. Lad os alle sammen bede efter mig. You can pray in Danish. Dear Jesus. Kære Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Tak fordi du døde på et kors for mig. Please forgive me my sins. Tilgiv mig mine synder. Come into my life. Kom ind i mit liv. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Jeg modtager dig som min Herre og Frelser. In the name of Jesus. I Jesu navn. Amen. Amen.